One game suspensions to the Steelers wide receiver Juju Smith Schuster and to the Bengals safety George Iloka. Both were suspended for illegal hits. They must each sit out their team's next game and forfeit one paycheck. A tri-state mother was accused of doing nothing when police say her child was being beaten with an extension cord. The child told police that he was hit by a man, but his mother, Amber Shears, did not give him medical attention. She was ordered to stay away from her son unless approved by Jobs and Family Services. White nationalist Richard Spencer will speak at the University of Cincinnati, but during spring break. That's according to his attorney. We've been waiting for months to learn when Spencer would speak after he threatened a lawsuit against the university. Spencer led the white nationalists march in Charlottesville that ended with violent clashes. One woman was killed. According to his attorney, Spencer will be at UC on March 14th at Zimmer Hall. That announcement, though, may be premature. Here's a statement from a university spokesperson. Quote, the university is in discussions with Spencer's lawyer about possible speaking dates, but does not have a signed agreement. We will release the specifics when the contract is signed and approved by both parties. UC also created a special website just for the public's questions about Spencer's appearance. You can find a link on WCPO.com. Well, at least three fires are burning out of control in Southern California right now. 150 structures destroyed so far, and firefighters are telling everyone to be ready to evacuate. One healthcare facility was completely destroyed. Now, due to the strong Santa Ana winds, the firefight is expected to continue all week with warnings in the area until Thursday. And Chief Meteorologist Steve Raleigh joining us now. Steve, the winds really create a problem out there. Yeah, we couldn't have a worse setup right now. In fact, go to the maps, guys, and we'll show it to you. There's an area of high pressure that's setting up, creating those Santa Ana winds. Today at the surface, there have been gusts to 50 miles an hour and some of the peaks to 70 miles an hour. And that's why it's out of control over those 31,000 acres. The interesting things is, well, we've got an exact kind of opposite setup for us. We have an area of low pressure kind of twisting the winds out of the northwest, of course, keeping us cold. There's some precipitation off to the east of us down to the south. I expect us to stay dry. You could get a sprinkle, but boy, it's about a 20% chance tonight. 38 degrees outside now. This tells the story. Look at the last 24 hours at this time yesterday. We're talking about a huge, huge fall off. The way it looks to me is some windy and clearing conditions tonight. Now we're looking at a possibility of some flurries for tomorrow, but it's kind of isolated. And as we come back, we'll talk about the snow showers that undoubtedly you've heard about. And I've got a timeline for those, Chris. All right, Steve, thank you. A clash between religious freedom and anti-discrimination laws. Today, the Supreme Court heard arguments in the case of a Colorado baker who refused to make a wedding cake for a same-sex couple. The baker says he had a free speech right to refuse to make the cake. But the couple argues that's wrong and flat-out discrimination. The Supreme Court justices appear to be divided on this case. Another Democrat is entering the race for Ohio Governor Richard Cordray. Officially announced his run near Columbus today. Cordray stepped down as director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau last month. Back at the beginning of the year, uh, three days before he left office, President Obama wrote me a letter. He wrote me a letter describing the work he thought we had done at the Consumer Bureau, commending us and encouraging us and telling me to stay at it and keep fighting. Uh, I decided that I should do that. You heard he mentioned President Obama there. He was actually appointed by President Obama in 2012. Okay, hired to help the deaf. Yeah, instead, a woman made up her own language. A lot of them were invented signs, and I wasn't able to understand what she was saying. The unusual way this phony interpreter baffled police and the deaf community. And later at 5, a dose of Tylenol for hurt feelings? Why one professor says the pill might actually ease the pain. And next, how to help tri-state families who won't be spending the holidays at their own homes this year. You're watching Nine on Your Side at 5. Listen to this story. This will make you shake your head a little bit. During a high-profile news conference, you know you often see a sign language interpreter, right? Just like this woman right there. Except other sign language interpreters say they knew right away from watching her that she wasn't the real deal. Carson Chambers tells us how she was able to con her way into this press conference held down in Tampa by Tampa police last month. She was just standing there, twisting her hands back and forth. I could tell automatically that interpreters don't do that. Durlin Roberts showed up at Tampa Police posing as a sign language interpreter on a night when many watched for news of a big arrest. A lot of them were invented signs, 
and I wasn't able to understand what she was saying. But as Tampa's police chief spoke about the capture of a serial killer suspect, the deaf and hard of hearing community were left hanging. Most of the time it just looked like she was singing, but not using actual signs. USF professor Rochelle Setembrino says she was disappointed, frustrated, and upset. Victim Monica Hoffa's mother, who is deaf as well, was also there, relying on a phony interpreter. She was standing right there, and the interpreter was signing in a way that was incomprehensible. A Tampa police spokesperson says he didn't do his due diligence, that Robert showed up that night posing as an interpreter, and he did not question her. The city relies on a prepaid contractor for interpreters, and Tampa police assumed she was sent over. We have so many interpreting agencies and professionals efficient, skilled interpreters here. Where did this person come from and why did they not vet her appropriately? To make matters worse, Roberts has a potpourri of mugshots from previous arrests. Arrests for, believe it or not, fraud. One conviction landed her in state prison. Really, the trust there is destroyed at that point. So who can we rely on? Told you it was a head shaker. Mm -hmm. Tampa police still don't know why she did this in the first place. And while it's not actually a crime, they say it is, of course, an ethical violation. Here is a simple way to help out homeless families in the tri-state this holiday season. The mayor and the first lady unveiled the city's fifth annual giving tree. Gifts this year will be sent to the Interfaith Hospitality Network of Greater Cincinnati, which provides emergency shelter to homeless families. Who these gifts will specifically benefit are families who are in shelter at the holiday. Um, so those are families who are currently homeless, who are um, working with us at our day center in Walnut Hills, but also with our faith partners around Cincinnati. They're being sheltered, they're being fed, they're working on a plan. If you would like to assist a family, here's all you have to do, you just pick out an ornament at City Hall and buy the gift that's listed. You can place the gift under the City Hall Christmas tree. That easy. That easy. Yeah. Nice. And it, it is starting to feel a little bit more like Christmas oh, out there. There's, there. there's yeah. a chill in you the air today. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and even more so this weekend. Yeah. We have got some really cold air, and of course, we're talking about some light snow too for Saturday morning. Right. Oh, yeah. So, well, at least it's Saturday morning. That's yeah. the way I'm looking at it. It'll be picturesque then. I, you know, See? I think it'll be like that. It'll yeah. be like the. Um, what is that box of powdered sugar that you put oh, you know, or something like that? <laughs> it's a little bit more yeah. than that, but All yeah, right. okay. Let's show you what's up here as we head in toward the weekend. We are going to be in the belly of some very cold, cold air, Arctic cold air. So the temperatures are going to get colder than what we have outside right now. Let's give you an idea of what's coming here in the next 24 hours and show you really beyond the smartphone. Yeah, you got the temperature lineup, but you know this. We're looking at a little clipper coming in tomorrow afternoon and take a look at the moisture by 5 o'clock. We really are going to be dry tonight and through tomorrow, but by the evening hours about this time, we could be looking at maybe a few snow showers up by Connorsville. You'll notice it's going to dry up but just keep a little moisture in. There's a little clipper that it will cut across. So you've got a better chance to see this tomorrow. Middletown, Lebanon, Wilmington, Hillsborough, West Union, maybe Batavia. It's going to be on that plane. So if you're to the south or southwest, chances are you likely won't see anything the way things are looking for tonight. So that's the next 24 hours. And then we're going to see generally quiet weather, but cold for Thursday and Friday. The sun will be back out and then we'll start to see some changes. Here's the bigger picture. There's that clipper as it comes in a little bit into the afternoon. Then it just scoots out of here. And then here comes Thursday with some sunshine as we head into Thursday night. Maybe a few clouds, maybe a few high clouds on Friday. Then as we get to Friday night, that's when we're talking about maybe some snow that could make things slick in some locations, a bridge, an overpass. It doesn't look like a lot of snow right now. Let's run it through and I'll give you the timing first. As we head through Friday night, you don't have any issues unless you're going to be out overnight because it does look like all of this stuff will be in the morning for Saturday morning. Here's Saturday at 7 a.m. We start to see maybe some snow showers in southeast Indiana. Then it starts working across the entire area through the day. Now, while that encompasses the area, and it does, it looks a little bit more ominous 
ominous than it really is going to be. We're going to see light snow showers that could accumulate to an inch the way things are looking tonight. Now, if you've been with me this week, we've been talking about the fact that we've got to get a little closer. We're going to be massaging the forecast right now. Both of my longer range computer forecasts are kind of honing in around that inch or so, maybe a little bit more, and it'll be over a long period of time. It'll be like from the morning to the afternoon, later evening. So uh, bottom line is we're still looking at the likelihood of seeing some snow showers, and I don't think it's going to be a lot, but it might be enough to just say, hey, heads up. 38 degrees and wow, cool looking sky off in the distance. Look at these colors down here, huh? That's pretty cool. Uh, OK, so uh, let's give you an idea what's happening out in Florence because tonight they're going to light the tree over at the government center. So good for you folks. Should be a lot of fun, a lot of activities going on. You'll notice it's going to be a bit windy and we'll be clearing as we head through the night. It'll be cold. 38 degrees outside right now in Cincinnati, and you'll notice the temperatures across the area mostly in the 30s. We're going to drop to the middle 20s, 7 a.m. for tomorrow. We'll get up to the 40s with that sunshine and again that slight chance of seeing that little clipper action. So tonight 26 in Cincinnati and 44 but those temperatures that you saw, it's going to feel like the middle 30s tomorrow. Gets colder this week, as I mentioned. I'm dropping it into the 30s, 20s, even teens for Saturday night. A lot of folks heading out on Saturdays these days because of holiday parties. Just uh, know it's going to be awfully cold for your party, and then you'll see it stays cold into next week, guys. All right, Steve, thank you. A pill for hurt feelings. It's probably in your medicine cabinet already. Uh, why a UK professor says Tylenol may also help emotional pain. Don't do it. Cookie dough is the best part of baking, right? But the FDA reminds us why we shouldn't eat it. And an affordable gym for all fitness goals. The inspiration behind Yep Fitness here in the Tri-State. Welcome back tonight in Healthy Living. Tylenol, or at least its ingredients, could be a cure for hurt feelings. This sounds bizarre, but a University of Kentucky professor started experimenting with the crossover between physical pain and emotional pain. In one study, acetaminophen did lessen the sting of hurt feelings, like after being teased or left out. All right, there's a new warning out there for anyone baking Christmas cookies. We're going to take a little bit of your fun away. The FDA says to think twice before eating raw cookie dough. Most people think of eggs and salmonella, but you know what? Unbaked flour is also associated with harmful bacteria like E. coli. If you have to have a bite of cookie dough, find a recipe that pre-bakes the flour and leaves out the eggs. Hmm. Working out at a gym is a luxury that not everybody can afford. That's why Bond Hill native Kurt Billups opened up Yep Fitness. It's a more affordable option for people with all types of fitness goals, including people with diabetes, autism, or mental illness. Everybody's not necessarily at a fitness mindset when they come in the doors. Some people come here just to lose weight. Some people come here because they're trying to relieve stress and anxiety. So we have to meet people where they are. Like that, meet them where they are. Yep, Fitness just moved to a new location on Summit Road in Roselawn. Memberships start at 15 bucks a month. And by the way, Kurt is going to be joining us live on 9 on Your Side at 7 so you can learn more about what his gym offers and how it compares to other options in the tri-state, Craig. Very cool. Mm -hmm. All right, more and more deer are popping up on the roads. Perhaps you've seen them. But can those deer whistles really keep them away? New at 530, John Matteris actually speaks to a UC professor who did a study on the issue. He asks, is it really worth buying one so you don't waste your money? And serious service cuts. That's what the local public transit system is facing right now if it can't find a fundraising solution. So it raises the question, who rides the bus? We take a look coming up. Nine on your side starts now. Thank you so much for joining us for 9 on your side at 530. 2018 will be a big year for SORTA. The transit agency is facing staggering service cuts if it can't find a funding fix, particularly for the Metro bus service. That's right. So we actually went looking for the people that this will affect the most. 9 on your side anchor Evan Millward introduces us to some of the faces of Metro and the struggles they face. Each year, Cincinnati Metro gives nearly 16 million rides. I really use it for every area of life. Jeremy Moses frequents the 20 and 78. He didn't choose to be without a car. 
He has spina bifida and can't drive. It does allow me to maintain some level of personal independence. But Moses says broken lifts, bus stops that aren't accessible, and long waits between buses mean his trip even to the grocery store can end up taking upwards of two to three hours. Now I want to see crosstown routes uh, in most sectors of the county. I don't want to have to transfer downtown to go from uh, here to Western Hills or here to Anderson. I actually just did a paper and my persuasive speech was on more buses, more bus stops. Nikayla Williams has one of the 75,000 jobs not easily accessible to Metro, according to a UC study. It definitely wasn't a choice, but I just have to deal with it because it's either catch the bus, deal with the commute, or sit in house and don't go to school, don't go to work, don't do anything with myself. She takes the 6 and 33 to get to Chatfield College and over the Rhine and back home to Westwood. The walk to each stop is between 6 and 15 minutes. It was like we're just stuck here, nothing. It's Walk or walk, or there's no in between really. Honestly, I, I think a lot of students on campus uh, don't even know that they can ride the bus. That's UC law student Isaac Smith. UC's campus has bus stops on all four sides, um, and the buses come incredibly often, uh, even even late into the night. He says he once used a Metro Pass that cost fifty three dollars for the semester. It's gone replaced by a UC discount for rides, but he says it actually costs more. The people that I know take the bus less. A service necessary for many of our neighbors, but as we've seen, also not even close to perfect. By and large, um, I think they're doing the best they can with what they have. I'm Evan Millward, nine on your side. You can read more about our faces of Metro and their suggestions to improve service right now on WCPO.com. A fired officer with the Butler County Corrections Center was greeted with an indictment in court today. Nakisha Newell is charged with having sex with a male inmate at the Hanover Street Corrections Facility. Newell was supposed to have a preliminary hearing today, but prosecutors told her attorney an indictment had been returned by the Butler County Grand Jury. In addition to sexual battery, Newell is charged with trying to smuggle contraband into the detention facility as well. We have been telling you about this all evening. It has been 20 years since two Cincinnati police officers were shot and killed in Clifton Heights. Right now, a memorial is going on for officers Ronald Jeter and Daniel Pope at the Holy Grail at the Banks. The Hamilton County Sheriff's bagpipes and drums are expected to perform. Let's listen. Thank you. Thank you. Let's raise a glass at 8 p.m. this evening, and I'll have a toast in Dan and Ron's honor. I'll be raising mine from Wisconsin, but I know I'll be able to feel all the love from afar. Warmest regards, Linda. Okay, and somebody from the Jeter family would like to have... So as you can see that they're having special comments, the bagpipes are right behind the individual who's speaking. We'll certainly bring you more of this as it comes into our newsroom later this evening. This memorial goes until 6 o'clock. Well, a huge drug bust in Middletown to talk about now. An officer found $30,000 worth of fentanyl during a traffic stop. The officer pulled over a Mason man and found two baggies of the drugs. You see them there. Fentanyl, by the way, of course, is that synthetic opioid that can be up to 100 times more potent than heroin. Police say it only takes about 3 milligrams of fentanyl to kill a person. More than 439 grams were found during the stop. The driver was arrested and charged with felony one drug abuse. We have a consumer alert for you right now. Kroger's Comforts for Baby with added fluoride is now recalled. Kroger found mold in the water. The water was in one gallon containers with sell by dates from April 26th to October 10th of next year. If you bought this water, return it to the store for a refund. The Bath and Body Works is a very popular store this time of year, but an Ohio woman says a wall plug in that she bought from the store actually melted her radio. It's really dangerous. I now am out of radio. Out of a radio because of that. Other customers have been complaining about similar problems with the Wallflower plug-in. And you kind of see it right here in the video. There's the radio, of course. When the Ohio woman called the company to complain, they told her that she had the air freshener plugged in too close to other items. She said, well, you're supposed to have 12 inches. And I said, well, I never knew that. And I said, you should have that on your packaging if that's what happens. 
Now, Bath and Body Works did not include the 12 inch warning on any products before 2015, but it is on newer products. There are details about how much space to leave between the air freshener and surrounding things. Smoking cigarettes could make you more likely to smoke marijuana. That's according to a new study. The article in the American Journal of Public Health says smokers overall are seven times more likely to use weed daily than non-smokers. This relationship was found to be especially strong among young people between the ages of 12 and 17. In fact, young smokers were more than 50 times more likely to use cannabis daily than their non-smoking peers. Here's a warning now from Kentucky State Police. It says it will never contact you to make donations to a charity. KSP says it's been hearing a lot of reports now about people posing as patrol officers and asking for money. KSP says it does not do this, so just hang up. Also, KSP only has three agency initiatives. Shop with a trooper, trooper teddy bears, and trooper island camp. If the caller says they are from a different KSP charity, it is most likely a scam. We are getting another look at the newly opened gorilla habitat at the Cincinnati Zoo. The new indoor gorilla world could be the largest kind of its exhibit. It gives zoo visitors a unique look at the iconic animals. Director Thane Maynard says the new exhibit also gives the gorillas about twice as much space to roam around. Thanks to this, we doubled the space behind the scenes for them. So the areas that they live and stay in sometimes at night, they have a lot more areas to move around. The zoo says this will be the first time in nearly 40 years you'll get to see the gorillas indoors and year round. Hmm. Saved by the delivery driver. Coming up new at 530, the man who kept an elderly couple from sending thousands of dollars to a scammer and the people the couple thought they were sending that money to instead. Steve. We've got ourselves kind of an interesting sky out there. I got to show it to you. Look at the different colors oh, that are wow. there. Boy, pretty impressive Gorgeous. stuff. Yeah. As we head through, we're going to start to see more of the clearing tonight, but we also have another chance for some flurries, snow showers, and of course that Arctic air. I have the timeline for you coming up. I'm John Matteries. Tis the season for hitting deer with your car. So would a simple deer whistle on your front bumper keep them away? I'll let you know what the experts say coming up on 9 on your side. You're watching 9 on your side at 530. Wow, check this out. A beautiful sunset right now. This is a live look from the 9 on your side sky camera. Now that it's winter, the sun sets several hours earlier than what it did in the summer. But wow, what a gorgeous view. Huh? Spectacular yeah. view there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, minimum wage in Ohio is about to increase. There's some good news for many folks. Uh, starting on the first of the year, minimum wage will go up to $8.30 per hour and four fifteen for people like bartenders or servers who get tips. The 15 cent per hour bump was approved by voters. This was through a constitutional amendment, by the way, and that says that the state minimum wage has to go up by the rate of inflation each year. New developments about the Cincinnati streetcar. Cincinnati Metro is extending the warranty for the streetcar ticket machines. You may remember the city and riders alike have been having a host of issues with faulty ticket machines. Also in today's transportation meeting, new numbers on ridership. Over the past six months, the Cincinnati Bell Connector has hovered between 55 and 65,000 rides per month. An Ohio family would have lost thousands of dollars if it had not been for an alert FedEx delivery driver. An elderly man near Cleveland was upset over a package. He said he needed to ship to what he thought was a New Jersey police department. The FedEx driver stopped to help out and then called the phone number where the package was heading. But after a few minutes, the driver said he knew it was a scam. And when he handed the phone back, I can hear them tell him that there's a gag order on this case. Do not discuss this with anyone or your son will go to prison. So I knew something was up and I stepped out of the room and called the police. Now the chief of police says that he's certainly glad the delivery driver stepped in and then called police. If the man would have sent the money, he says it would have been very difficult for the police to do anything at all to recover that cash. Shopping for your family in the next few weeks? Who isn't, right? Before you do, make sure you're visiting the real website of that retailer who you're buying from. Consumer reporter John Matteris has a new warning from the Cincinnati Better Business Bureau. You're watching Nine in Your Side at 5:30. Well, this is peak deer season in the tri-state, with dozens of deer car accidents on local highways every single week. Consumer reporter John Matteris looks into whether inexpensive deer whistles might actually prevent a crash. 
But first, a warning about fake shopping websites, John. Well, Kristen, thousands of parents around the tri-state are buying Christmas gifts right now for their kids. But a warning before you order anything online. The Better Business Bureau tonight is warning about fake websites that look like real business sites, especially selling Nike and Uggs shoes. Last year, a tri-state man got ripped off buying discount gym shoes. These are them from a Nike outlet that turned out to be a Chinese website selling knockoffs. The BBB says check out online vendors very carefully. Well, last Friday, we brought you the touching story of a local Fairfield mom who was scammed by someone pretending to be renting a cute little home on Hamilton Avenue. It was the classic home rental scam, though. You see, the house was real, but the scammer had stolen the photos from a real estate listing, and the woman sent a deposit. Tonight, three generous tri-state non-in-your-side viewers have offered to help the young single mother who lost her Christmas money to the scam. We're putting them in touch with her. This is peak deer season in the tri-state, and no doubt you've seen dead deer laying on the side of the highway at some point. Well, one Warren County man whose wife was in an accident with a deer is wondering if deer whistles just might prevent it from happening again. This amazing video from Michigan shows how quickly a deer can dart out in front of you. Oh my God! In this case, a snowmobile took out the animal. Have you seen deer? Oh yes, we have, we have a lot of deer. Closer to home, Jim McHugh says his wife recently hit a deer, causing more than $12,000 damage to her car here in Warren County. One minute she was driving, the next there was a deer looking at her through the windshield. So he decided to buy a set of deer whistles, sold at hardware and auto parts stores for as little as 10 bucks. I don't really know if they really, really work. So would a whistle on your front bumper really have any effect? Well, we tracked down a professor who a decade ago did an extensive study of these whistles and on whether deer could really hear them at all. And we ran them through a test track that we had where we were able to record from the point of view of a deer. Dr. Pete Chaffel studies animal hearing here at the University of Cincinnati. He co-authored this study testing six deer whistles. The good news, he says deer can hear the whistles. The bad news, your car may hit the deer first. The amount of road that the car is covering per second, by the time the, the, the signal actually would have reached the deer, the car would have been close enough probably to strike the deer. No university study has ever proven that whistles prevent deer accidents. Bob McHugh, though, says it can't hurt. Oh, I, I, I'm willing to give it, a, give it a try. Now, newer whistles are battery powered. They claim to be louder. However, many municipalities, including the city of Cincinnati, do not install whistles on their cars. The Cincinnati Park Board tells me tonight they have no evidence the whistles work and they don't want to give their employees a false sense of security.